Welcome back to Essence TV. Our conversation today is about addressing the issue of poverty, the poverty on our doorstep, but addressing it in a very meaningful way that builds resilient and self-sustaining communities. In the Philippines, half of the country's 84 million people live below the poverty line and 40% of its urban community families occupy what the Asian Development Bank call makeshift dwellings in informal settlements. Today we're chatting with Tony Maloto, founder of Gawad Kalinga and finding out about the work of Gawad Kalinga working in more than five countries and more on the way. Tony, what's GK doing in the Philippines? Well, we are just unleashing the potential for greatness of our people because uh, our citizens do not have to be squatters in a land that has a lot of land. So we are now focused on getting land for the landless because 70% of our people are landless and 40% of them are squatting and living in, in shanties as you have mentioned. And this is, we have just uh, uh, discovered a, a formula that has allowed for the first time donation of land on a massive scale. And this is when you create a win-win formula for the, when, when landowners donate a portion of their land then the rest of the land goes up in value because we remove the, we bring peace to the, the area, we remove the shanties around the land, we trigger economic activity. So again, um, we, when we have this, when, we, when the country discovered that uh, it is possible for the rich and poor to really work together and to bring benefit for, for, for everyone. So this partnership is not just about a handout, it's actually empowering people to change their future. Yes, definitely. And uh, we have also discovered that if you just don't focus on the money, you know, because this is not about the pocket, this is not about the heart. When you discovered also the, the infinite uh, resources, you know, of caring and sharing, you know, that's in the heart. And so when, when people start to donate their talent and their skills, then uh, we are able to leverage and multiply resources. So you mentioned that architects will uh, help you, they'll provide their expertise and then uh, people from around the world come and actually provide physical labour. Tell us about the sevenfold approach of Gawad Kalinga and why you've succeeded where other NGOs have failed. Well, first of yeah. all, well, uh, I, I, I suppose because uh, we have seen that this is a journey, that this is just a, a, a continuing process of really uh, inviting people to contribute their expertise, not money. You know, because if you go for the pocket, you get loose change. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go for the heart, the pocket will follow. And so now we have the, a program for shelter, but the best uh, architects and engineers are also designing and, and building houses for us. In fact, we just launched uh, recently together with the number one bank in the country, the uh, GK this Designer Village Campaign. So we got the architects in the different parts of the country to, to adopt a community and compete you know, uh, for the best design. Mm -hmm. And uh, three years ago, we were studied by MIT, you know, how we were able to transform uh, a slum community and build uh, a thousand homes for 5,000 uh, former informal settlers in two years time. So, you know, we now recently I was with the uh, UCLA and we're entering into a partnership on public health because health is a major pillar also. Right. And uh, we have also the environmentalists now. In fact, we have the former Secretary of Environment heading now our Green Kalinga program. <laughs> so we're planting trees in all our, in all our sites. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, we also are now moving towards organic farming. <laughs> you know, for food sufficiency. So the, uh, the shelter that you provide is done on a sweat equity basis where the people that receive the houses must invest their time and effort. But there's more than that, isn't there? There's food production and livelihood and, and health, community. Health, mm -hmm. and we also uh, form them to be in, into good citizenship and teach them on good governance because we organize them into uh, neighborhood uh, associations. And uh, aside from putting in the sweat equity, you know, that is equivalent to the value of their house, they have to build other people's houses, mm -hmm. you know, and that also brings peace to the community because you know, how can you fight with your neighbor who built your house? Right. You know, but then they have to undergo values formation because we need to raise community values, you know, respect for life, respect for property, respect for culture, religion. And because uh, the, the, the first consequence of Gawad Kalinga is peace. 
and then better health for the children because they used to live in subhuman uh, shanties. Now they have toilet, they have clean water, they have electricity. And this is what we have been sharing with other NGOs who take programs piecemeal. You know, even if you have a good program for health, if the person is still a squatter living in a shanty, then you will just be wasting your resources. And recently I met also with members of parliament here in Australia from Canberra, to, to Victoria, I was with the, some of the funding agencies, and we said it's important that we attract synergy and convergence for a holistic approach towards community transformation. Mm -hmm. And the sustainability of the effort will really be in empowering the poor to help themselves and one another. Right. That actually leads me to a very interesting question. Does this translate to other communities? You know, it, it's all very well to see how incredibly successful GK is in the Philippines. But does it translate across culture and language? Yes, and uh, in fact, uh, whatever things we have in the Philippines, in the urban areas, and then we go to the rural areas, we go to the typhoon victims, we go to the refugees who are victims of conflict resolution. And from these experiences, we now brought it to Papua New Guinea. To, to build also a, a, a village where there were two warring tribes. This is stage six Gerihu in Port Morrisby. And we were able to bring peace, you know, to these communities that, you know, that they were known to be notorious rascals mm -hmm. in the area. But the amazing thing is most of the support we got came from Australians. So we now have also Australian volunteers helping us. We also started in, in, in Cambodia in the and uh, these were Buddhists, and, uh, and many of them were victims also of, uh, of the last regime. And so we are also learning to adapt to the local culture. And uh, our strategy is simple. If you do the work in the Philippines, get the, the most successful Filipinos to help the poor Filipinos. If you do it in Cambodia, get the successful Cambodians to help the poor in their country. So in East Timor, we have also started. And these are East Timor, Papua New Guinea. These are countries that are quite... Uh, of uh, you know uh, great interest to Australia mm -hmm. and and so um, uh, the approach in East Timor is uh, really how to improve agriculture it's not always we don't normally always start with homes although that is the natural pattern for us but now like we're we're starting a, a group in in uh, in uh, South Africa we're starting with agriculture and education mm -hmm. and we hope to open in in Colombia and other parts of South America later this year wow. One of the things that really touched my heart when I first heard about GK several years ago uh, was the way that you uh, go in and really empower the local community and it's a collaborative approach. You don't go in with a cookie cutter and say this is what a GK village looks like and this is how you do it. It's actually really asking for input and each village looks different, sounds different, but is uniquely GK. Yes, what is important for us is to gain our faith, you know, that uh, we can do it, and also restore trust. And uh, we have to show people that the government is not an enemy, business is not the enemy, that the landowners are not the enemy of the landless, that the rich are not the enemy of the poor. Uh, because uh, we, we realize that poor countries are in a perpetual state of conflict. And so we have to uh, have a transcendent cause. You know that that allows people to transcend their their tribal their tribal loyalties, their business rivalries, their parochial interest. You know, for us to really uh, help transform lives. Mm. And uh, when we deal with business, we have shown them that if we invest in the poor, it will expand the market base. And when you also work for hope, then it encourages people to invest. And uh, we realize that you know the work of development for us is a numbers game. To get, to get politicians to support the work, you have to show them that you impact on the lives of a big number of voters. Indeed. To, and to, to get business to come in, yes. the big number of consumers. Right. So you create that win, win situation, yes. and we call this the build philosophy. Yeah, that's great. Well, as you can see, Tony Maloto, one of the most inspiring people that I've ever met, heading up Gawad Kalinga, or GK as it's known. And when we come back in a moment, we're going to find out the next exciting step in the work of GK. You're not going to want to miss this on Essence TV.